So I was just making my way over to the shopping district and then I was pleasantly distracted. What are these bizarre looking trees over here, I thought? It appears that it's mud and terracotta surrounded in glow lichen. I, I believe Joe has managed to build his own mangrove swamp here. And as I was checking out these cool block combinations for custom trees and the like, I, I start to hear something over here. And I was not imagining things. Joe has a shulker living in his attic. Let's get back on track. Welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. And if you didn't see the last episode, then you might be a little bit astonished as to why I have so much copper in here. You should totally go and check that episode out. One of the things I want to do is to go back to that farm and upgrade it. And one of the things that we will need is beacons. You see, this season of Hermitcraft, I wanted to be self-sufficient. I always get comments like, why are you building a farm? Just use someone else's shop. Well, today, today I'm making your dreams come true. So over here at Illuminate, I believe that they sell beacons. We are gonna need a couple of these to upgrade the copper farm and also the farm that I'm going to build today needs beacons as well. So I'm gonna buy a handful of these. Oh. And there's uh, a fancy elevator to get up top to where the beacons are. Let's do this. Bam. Aha. Oof. And the frog lights are already up for sale too. Dang, they look so pretty. And at one diamond block each, we are going to break the bank on this one. <laughs> I'm going to just buy eight of them. So yes, I wasn't particularly in the mood for grinding my way through a nether fortress getting skulls. We've done that already once this season. Also, these shade lamps... They're ghast heads. Let's now talk about this thing, because the farm that we are constructing today will help us with this project. This is one of Ren's community quests. Am I calling it the right thing? Uh, build an LA breeding sanctuary. That's what me and Corallus are going to do. And the spot that we're going to build it on is actually like right in front of us here on the lake. So when thinking about block palettes and colors, you know, ice, that kind of mixes pretty well with the LA. So why not build an LA sanctuary on an ice lake? We'll construct an ice lake in this area and then build the sanctuary on top of it. So an ice lake requires an ice farm and I want to build one unlike I've seen before. It's actually based on a similar concept. It's going to be a player AFK ice farm, but I wanted to make this one a lot simpler to use than some of the previous designs I had seen. And I have found a way to do that, but it requires us getting our hands on some ice to begin with. So I'm over here just flying past full symmetries. Absolutely amazing builds. These look so, so cool. Somewhere around the back here, there it is. We've got ourselves an ice farm. And so believe it or not, I actually need 10 stacks of ice to build my ice farm. But the good thing is I need way more than 10 stacks to build the LA Sanctuary and the ice lake. So let's get harvesting. You know what? A classic simple farm like this is probably good enough for the job that I need, but we're going to automate things. That's actually one of the reasons that we need a couple of beacons for the farm that we're building. And this, my friends, this is uh, more than 10 stacks and it did not take me long to collect that. I should say, though, I also need a lot of packed ice and some blue ice as well, so that will probably add up once you start crafting those blocks. Oh yeah, and to AFK at this place, you have to be frozen in ice. That's kind of what it looks like, right? <laughs> it looks super cool here. Yeah, this is the little AFK spot. Anyways, false. thank you for letting me use your ice farm. I'm going to be building my own. So let's talk about location because this is a big area right here, this mountain, and it's where my base is located. Just over the top here, you can see the entrance with the skull. And we're going to be building on the opposite side of this mountain where there is an outstretch of snow just over this little bit right here, there it is, that's the spot we're going to put this. Now the reason that we need this location is because my ice farm, it takes up a lot of space in a single direction. It's not terribly big, but in order to make it work and to work better, you want to extend it further and further out. So we're going to go as far as the edge. Okay, <laughs> don't panic. Uh, what am I going to do to get myself out of this one? Can I throw an end? Okay, I'm going to have to break the blocks, aren't I? Dang it. <laughs> oh, I, I think I think the ender pearl actually worked, right? Yeah, it did. This is cause for an experiment. 
So I'm going to wander into the middle of this. We're in the middle of a 3 by 3 and if I just throw the ender pearl, yeah, it goes through the blocks and takes you out. So that's another great reason to keep a stack of ender pearls in your inventory. Unfortunately, that was my last one. Distractions, distractions, but I think you get the idea. This farm requires some length, so we're going to start building it somewhere around here and it's going to extend across this biome. And so to give us as much space as possible, I've decided to nestle this end of the contraption with the redstone into the side of the mountain. And that means that we're now ready to start building. And you know how I roll. We're going to do a time lapse. So there it is my friends, a pretty epic site actually, it's quite an unusual sort of farm right? And I bet you're itching to figure out how this thing works. So I will tell you that what's up the top here is a flying machine but I'm going to leave you to figure out how this thing might exactly work because we're going to go on a little bit of a detour before we get this thing up and running. And the reason for that is because I have been working on my slime farm and we are looking at the nether side of it. So when I open these chests, you're going to see that we have gathered an extraordinary amount of slime. And believe it or not, I needed to do that to get enough slime blocks to make the flying contraption as I had run out before building it. And all of this comes with a little story of me doing something like really, really stupid. So first of all, I need to jog your memory about the slime farm. We have this perimeter around the AFK spot and we use these visual tools to see where this is. And I spent a lot of time going around and lighting up all of these caves and there are practically no dark spots left, which led to having these amazing rates for our slime farm. But the problem is I got greedy. I wanted to make this farm even better and I decided to deploy an idea that I forgot had a fundamental flaw. This was to expand the area around the slime farm with a grid of nether portals so that slimes would spawn, pick a random direction and go straight into a nether portal. But there was a big and fundamental flaw that I had forgotten about. And so after putting in many, many hours grinding away for obsidian and creating a really cool looking farm, it was only when I was finished that it clicked. The light levels prevent the slimes from spawning. What is wrong with me? Why do I do this over and over again in this game? So yeah, I decided that I was just going to edit that derp out of the video, but I figured I might as well tell you since we did get loads and loads of slimes from the slime farm that was there before, but now I have to spend time tearing out all of those obsidian blocks. Anyways, you might notice that my frame rate around here is much better than I've shown you in the past. And it turns out the culprit were the ambient particle effects of the basalt deltas. Now, because I have a bunch of custom mods, I can go in here and specifically target these particle effects. So if I apply that now and uh, start to look around, yep, can you see the difference in FPS? All this time, it was it was just the particle effects. But let's get back to the ice farm. I've set up two temporary beacons over here. They are spaced out to span the distance of the farm because we are going to need to take advantage of the haste effect. We will be standing on top of slime blocks, which will slow down our harvesting speed as we move. What I wanted to do with this farm was create an AFK player system where you don't get pushed around by water streams and an absolutely massive setup, but I have in some ways created another massive setup, but we will stand here, I will press the button, 
we set off a flying machine up above and there are some downwards facing pistons. They push the ice down in front of us and then we follow it behind on this machine here, harvesting the ice as we go. We get all the way to the end. Look at that. Whoa. That's some absolute mega zoom right there. The textures look really weird. But yes, we get all the way down to the end there and that will send us all the way back again. So the camera account has logged in. We're going to do some replay mod on this so you can see it all sped up. But the beginning bit, the first time we're using the machine, I am slightly terrified. Okay, here we go. I press the button. I hold down right click. I press F3 and T to reload the resource pack. And gosh, those pistons are loud, aren't they? And I'm holding down the wrong button, <laughs> which doesn't help. Um, so yeah, slight problem. I need to be forward a little bit. So we get the block at the back as well. This is extraordinarily loud and it's also not quite working like it's supposed to. I've tested this and usually it harvests every single ice block. But here on the server, something is making it not behave properly. I'm guessing because there are more players on, maybe the TPS is affected. Uh, this is this is not a good sign and the reason why is because when we come back this way You might be thinking that we're picking up the last of these But the flying machine is going back over as well and ice can actually grow as it flies over the top And this means that it can push some of the ice lower than where I'm currently clicking But that never happens that the flying machine. Whoa, the zooms all messed up the flying machine got stuck down the end here I'm not sure why because I built some circuitry over here that's supposed to detect when it arrives and uh, it looks like I just missed a block here. So anyway, the flying machine will go back and while you're in the farm, it's going to keep creating more ice that you harvest. So you can leave this thing going back and forth over and over again. The issue is though with the mining speed not working the way as I had once tested it, where the blocks are like that, where they haven't been mined, they get pushed down again and then the player is not going to actually pick them up. This is quite disappointing. I spent so much time working on this. So in my astonishment of the failure we just encountered, I want to bring you to the testing world where we eventually ended up on the design that you just saw. And let me speak on those floors for a moment as you'll see the farm in action right now. I'm going to temporarily remove that command block when I press this button. Look at the ice getting pushed down. It goes down too far for the player to harvest because they're aiming at this level and the idea is that they're AFK. But anyway, it all worked here on the server, but not on Hermitcraft, which just drives me mad. And this thing looks so cool as well. Look, we've got a flying machine coming along here, pressing down all of the ice. If you're wondering why there are obsidian blocks, it's because that's where the ice can then regenerate next to, right? Although, what happened there? Not entirely sure. This is how they regenerate. And so I built the farm on Hermitcraft even longer than this because while you're in the farm harvesting the ice, it starts regrowing again. And so when the flying machine comes back across, you can then harvest some more and stay AFK in this thing for as long as you like. Anyways, we started off with uh, this thing over here, trying to figure out a bunch of problems on how you could get a flying machine to work and how you could get them to work side by side with pistons pushing down. And this flying machine is an early version of this tiled one over here. Unfortunately, it doesn't push the pistons down. In order to do that, you need like an observer in the middle, extra slime blocks, and that means that you'd need a secondary flying machine to pull along the one below. This was all crazy stuff for me, as I haven't done a lot of stuff with flying machines, and it was really cool to actually figure out how to chain two of them together. So when I do this, you can see we get a massive array of them, going back and forth and they're all pushing downwards <laughs> so very cool but eventually the community got involved and showed me some better designs than what I could make so we have this thing right here that goes back and forth that's much more elegant and eventually someone tweeted this at me which was a way to chain a whole bunch of them together it looks more sleek compact it's got that symmetry going on and a row of pistons pushing down at the bottom and so from there, we eventually extrapolated it into this design. And to be fair, my trip back and forth actually yielded quite a bit of ice. That's really not a bad return. And remember, I can sit in this thing and go back and forth over and over again. The only problem is, it don't work. 
And I'm probably not going to find a way to fix it, right? Because, ugh. Oh, this, my friends, is brutal. I just cannot find a solution. But as you can see, I've made modifications. So the terracotta blocks and open water streams mean that all the ice that falls down either ends up in my inventory or over here at the honey blocks, which, by the way, are not full blocks. So there are hoppers underneath, so items coming in at the side get picked up by them and ones that land on the top. And yes, that would be exactly the same effect as if they weren't here and the water streams just went straight over the hoppers. But I wanted to use the honey blocks, which I should also mention we're using honey blocks here. And this actually like sticks the player in position when they go up and down. I tried it the other way around with slime blocks there and it made collecting the ice even worse. So speaking on collecting ice, I had an idea that we would remove a piston at the end since we didn't seem to harvest these blocks. And then guess what? I had to remove another one as well. And even with just three blocks, for some reason, this server does not let you harvest all of the ice blocks in front of you. Like I said, tested it on my redstone server and you could mine all five blocks in a row. Here on Hermitcraft, it's like, nope, every now and then it's going to leave some behind. This thing is still pretty good, but I basically end up just manually walking around in this area to pick up the blocks. So maybe I might give up on this and repurpose it at another point in time, but it is supposed to produce ice and we've certainly got a lot of that from it. So I hope you haven't forgotten what all the ice is for. Of course, in this space, we're going to construct an ice lake for the LA Sanctuary. I'm going to be working on that, ready to show you in the next episode, because for the rest of this one, we got to meet up with ZF, who had a really cool contraption he made that he wanted to share with us. What is there? Uh... Oh, it's, it's, it's beefy, isn't it? Oh, it looks so big when you hold it as well. Ah! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it is actually the same size, like, as it is on your head. But it just, you expect it to be smaller when it's like an item floating about. Azuma, my friend, you look like a man who has some arrows to spare. Oh, yes. I am the bone mage, a man who <laughs> has mastered the skeleton ways, and we all know they drop arrows. <laughs> and at the moment, are they just going into, like, the corner of the room? You're just shoving them under the rug? Yeah, but I'm stockpiling them away for a rainy day, you know? <laughs> well, today is a rainy day, and the rain is made of arrows, my friend, because wow. <laughs> uh, follow me this way. You'll see what I'm talking about. This right here is my, uh, I'm calling it the, what am I calling it? The the, the funnel gunnel? Oh, I don't me. know. <laughs> what are you up to, Zedaf? <laughs> this this is 120 dispensers, and um, as you can see, there's like a portal yeah. in front of it. This is a big portal. On the other end, on the overworld, it goes down to a really, really tiny little portal. So these are all going to get funneled into that tiny portal. I want to just create this, like, massive burst of arrows coming from one place. And hence you bringing the arrows uh, right. to fill all of these up. First thing to do before we can have any fun is we have to fill this thing up. So have you got any arrows on you? Um, on me? I've got, I've got, yeah, a stack. <laughs> Oh my that, god! Okay, that'll do the job, go, won't it? This is gonna go far. I'll put that right here. All right then. You want to see where all of these bones come from? Uh, uh, arrows, yes, please. <sighs> I've got bones on the mind, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally on my head. Oh yeah, <laughs> some just up there. <laughs> oh, there's baddies. Wow, they're falling from the skies. <laughs> you'll you'll be okay, but maybe not where we're going next. If I can find it, it's somewhere around it. Yeah, just just down here. Plunge into the water. Just uh -oh. plunge, just go okay. straight down. Plunging. Oh my god! Oh, oh my what? <laughs> what is this? Ah, what is this? Oh god, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're after you, luckily. Look Ooh. at them all. Yeah. What? What is this? Is this your aquarium, or I guess it's more of an asquare, a scarium? A scarium, right? the aquatic scarium <laughs> of the undead. I can hear that music now. Yeah, it's beautiful. You need to have a a um a nice synchronized swimming routine with all of these drowns and things. Okay, oh Hazuma, your hands sore from filling all these dispensers up? Yeah, I got pricked by a few of those arrows. Well, prepare to get pricked by a few more because uh, we're turning this bad boy on. And I think, you know what, Ooh. Ashley, you stay right there. Don't don't move a muscle. Um, let's just do a, a test firing, shall we? Um, I'm, I'm just going to stand behind this wall while you do your <laughs> test firing. 
<laughs> so obviously we've not turned the portal on yet, but hopefully you got to you got to really be looking closely. We want to make sure all 120 dispensers are firing at once. You okay, ready? Okay, gosh. Reluctantly, I'll stand and watch all of them. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh my god, none of them hit me. None of them hit you? Is there I'm, just an Azuma-shaped hole of I'm arrows a miracle. In the <laughs> that's what I am. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of arrows. Yeah, Okay. A crazy amount so, of arrows. Now, imagine that amount of arrows, but condensed to a 3x3 three three area. Um, that's what's going to happen next. Okay, Azuma, can you hear me? I can, yes. You're in the overworld, correct? Yeah, you must be shouting really loud from the never. I, I Trust me, I'm going to have a sore throat for weeks after this. Okay, now you're going to get a lot of arrows coming through Let's on a clock. It. And I'm going to try my hardest to get oh, there before dang. the arrows run out. Be careful. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Look at all these arrows. We need to pick them up. How, how long until gonna... this starts lagging? I don't know. How do I turn this thing off now? I can't even... <laughs> okay, I need to go back and turn this clock off immediately. Okay, grab, get hit. grab some, grab some oh! chests or something. <laughs> that looks amazing. To gather these... <gasps> <gasps> Gosh, what a sight. Right, Azuma, I've now added um, something so we don't have to keep coming back to the nether when we want to trigger this thing. You might see a little uh, sneaky target block up ah, on the wall over there. Oh, yes. And that is in prime position from this this portal here. So uh, if we head if we head back through to the base... Okay. <laughs> oh, it worked! What? Oh, my goodness! <laughs> it worked! It worked first time! That is terrifying. Okay. <laughs> and, and it just did the one pulse. <gasps> one pulse. So now anytime you do a snowball f through, maybe, if you hit the thing. No, I'm not sure that did it. Do you know what I think you might want to do? Oh, oh my oh, goodness oh, me. Oh, no. oh. <sighs> what? <laughs> you got an arrow what in your cheek. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's in my mouth. It's like a toothpick. Yeah, just spam them through. That's that got to work. Go oh, God. Oh, my goodness. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> what a wall of arrows, man. I've never seen that many arrows in my life. Come That's an amazing place. defense system. Right, now, here's what you got to do next. you got to bring someone who knows nothing about this, right? Just, yeah, just say, look, look, stand here, throw some snowballs down mm. the middle, and then oh, you'll scare the life out of them. Oh, man. What a what a silly contraption. Um, cool. Anyway, thanks for the arrows, Azuma. I appreciate your time, and... Um, yeah, if you find any in various places on your later, you can keep those arrows. Oh, thank you, thank you.